Welcome to Life with AI, Unlocking Your Third Brain. In these short episode series, we'll unravel the profound ways AI is reshaping our lives. Dive in with me as we uncover tools and insights that empower you to elevate your health, intellect, and help you work with maximum efficiency. I'm your host, Richard Fala. Amazon just launched their own version of ChatGPT called Amazon Q that is focused on businesses and developers. I've gotten many questions asking me how good that bot is. Is it going to also have the same applications like ChatGPT? Can we see it in action and so on? So I thought I'll do this episode to show you how good or not as good this new Amazon release is. Uh, we'll test it together on some very basic stuff like image creation, asking for basic recipes, analyzing a file, so we can see how much impact it's going to have on our lives in the future. Before I do that, I would love to invite you to join our beta release for openbuild.ai. We are building an AI power studio that lets you drag and drop and build your own recipes to optimize the way you work and collaborate with your team. It's openbuild.ai and we'll invite you as soon as the beta is released. Let's dive right into today's topic, Amazon Q, how good is it? And I wanted to clarify a few things. One, Amazon Q is not publicly facing to consumers like ChatGPT. So not everybody can go in and utilize it and interact with it as easily as you do with ChatGPT, as, at least not for today. Two, this is primarily for internal company use or maybe some front facing use, but it relies heavily on the sources of data that you feed it. So you have to configure those sources and you have to get really technical. But do not worry, this is not a technical session. So if you see anything technical on my screen, do not worry. We're not doing uh, anything uh, at that depth. And uh, finally, this is primarily going to impact the way companies work internally and developers are provisioning on the go ChatGPT agents um, everywhere, all right? Now, before I share my screen and show you how we can build one and test it together, I wanted to recognize how Amazon have been literally making an impact in the AI landscape. So one, they invested $1 billion in ChatGPT. They invested $4 billion recently in Anthropic, which are almost a competitor to ChatGPT with slightly different variations, of course. They have $200 million in Hugging Face, which is built on top of the Facebook model. They have the Innovation AI Innovation Institute they invested $100 million in. They have a billion dollars invested in startups using AI to solve industrial processes and issues. And not to mention, they have a huge library of AI, of off-the-shelf AI tools and um, functions for developers, particularly for fraud detection, machine learning, and much more. So they really invested heavily and in the next few years, I would estimate them to probably invest anywhere from 10 to $20 billion to enhance this landscape. So I just wanted to recognize the impact that Amazon has been doing or has done on this space. And they pretty much have their hands on, you know, invested in every major technology out there. All right, so they did release Amazon Q. And I'm going to switch to my screen right now so you can see what's going on. We have our entire infrastructure on our current stack built on Amazon. So I already have an Amazon AWS, they call it, service, which is built to create applications, web, mobile, and so on. One of the services that now you can find there is called Amazon Q. So I already took a long shortcut. I went inside Amazon Q. I created an application like you see here, and I gave it some name along some credentials. Now, AWS's interface is, again, not that friendly because it's not built for front-facing consumers, but let's dive or go inside the application. So what I did right now is I created almost a new version of a smart chatbot, AI-powered chatbot. So now that I'm inside of it, and I've done some of the basic settings, authentications and user groups and service access and so on. They have an important section, which if you do not configure qu 
quite frankly, the chatbot is completely useless, at least for today. So here is asking me for some data sources. So I did connect one of my S3 buckets. It's like a storage with files and photos. And I uploaded a file, a very simple file for that matter, which is the Amazon earnings for uh, 2023 so far. Because I wanted to test how well does it do with documents. You can add a lot more. So if I am to show you what sources they provide, they could also do web crawlers which by the way is not browsing the web. This is primarily you giving it URLs to crawl, doc uploads, and then they have all these additional services that you can connect as well. And what this tells me is that it's tapping into a very specific data source that most likely will be used internally for a company. So let's say I have a Google Drive with hundreds of files for recruiting or HR. I can probably load it in here connected to Google Drive, and then have my chatbot interact with those files. Supposedly, that is the theory. All right, so once I've configured my data sources, now the bot is, you know, have some content, supposedly, right, including that file. So now what I can do is preview the web experience. So I will click here to preview it. So far, this is not public. Nobody can access it except myself. All right, so these are some basic configurations for it, like the name, title, and they give you some default prompts. Now, one thing I noticed in these default prompts is that they're, sometimes they just do not answer you, which was um, a little bit frustrating. So write an article, which gave me, you know, like it flowed as this. And again, it wasn't consistent. Sometimes it will work. Sometimes it wouldn't. On the left, you can see the conversations. So this is a similar style like most of the chats. But I mean, if the default prompt is really not returning anything, that's concerning to me. I asked her some very basic questions like, what is the most selling book of all times? It couldn't recognize that. And that screen on the right always shows up, which is a little bit inconvenient. I ask it some questions, how you differ from other products, it couldn't answer. So it only answered some very basic things like are you smarter than ChatGPT, GPT? Uh, and what's so special about you? So really, it's boring at the basic level. Now I went to level up and I uploaded the file. Now although I fed it through the source, and maybe I'm doing this wrong, but it couldn't read from the source. I had to upload the file and then ask it some questions. So again, the file that I uploaded was the Amazon earnings for 2023. And you can see right here, it's uploaded. And then I ask it some questions to interact. It did answer, which is great. And I ask, is this from the document? And I ask it to create a graph for me, which is an awesome feature in ChatGPT. Um, it's called an interpreter. It, it actually can create a nice looking chart that you can copy and paste into your reports if you'd like. It just simply couldn't do that. The final chart that it gave me or um, when I asked it for a line chart, this is what it gave. All right. So it's absolute basic. It's not capable of creating graphs and charts and analyze at the deep level. And at some point as well, it didn't even recognize the file. So I uploaded it again at a different thread. I asked the questions how much they made and it just couldn't properly answer. So it's really inconsistent when it comes to answering basic information on a file. Now additional conversations that I tried to do is to generate an image. It does not have any capabilities to generate images yet. Uh, the ability to write anything really is very basic. So write a welcome email to a new employee. And again, sometimes it answers, sometimes it's, it cannot do it. There you go. Whereas before, I believe here, it did answer me on a different topic to write an email. So I've seen that inconsistency kind of concerning to me. 
I definitely would not use it yet until it matures. And it has so many limitations that for me, at this point, it's not as useful as I want it to be. So this can be also deployed live if I want to grab the URL and share it with somebody with some additional configuration and authentication. Um, but as you can see, first, the interface itself is very limited. It does, I mean, it's complicated. Nobody can just go in and use it. You have to have some technical skills to create it and not mess things up. You have, you have to have AWS to do it. Uh, second, the capability of the engine itself is very limited and weak, even though I tested it, you know, it's clear to say on very basic data set, okay, which is a file and an S3 bucket, I couldn't get anything answered. Um, and finally, when it comes to the reliability of it, I just don't feel like it's reliable enough at this Point. Now, how I foresee this kind of make an impact on the business world once they get it right, once they improve it, I is definitely going to have, um, internally speaking, if I am to load my documents and my databases, it's going to be a lot easier to do that through the interface of the ad sources. That's one, um, which means a developer can deploy these chatbots very quickly, either via command APIs code and grab the link and share it, or they can configure it directly here and link up the data sources. Uh, I do not see this as a competitor to chat GPT. I think it's the opposite. It's just going to make smart chat more mainstream down the road. But as you can see, it probably has a long way to go until it provides some level of competitiveness over other products because with ChatGPT's GPTs, right? The new um, create your own version of it. I think you can do a lot of the stuff, connect your own data sources, you can make it private and share it. Now, there could be some privacy concerns on doing it on GPT versus here. This is more closed and internal and Amazon claims that they don't necessarily share the data or they use it themselves. Um, so there's some level, an element of privacy that I think Amazon can provide, you might not find directly on ChatGPT itself. Um, so that's it, my basic analysis and overview of Amazon Q. I really wanted to do this because I know every product that goes out in the market can change the way that we work and do things for the better. So I hope you like this episode. And if you do enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe so I can gauge your feedback and improve in the future. Thank you again for joining me and I'll see you on the upcoming episode.